on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and shuns evil? Okay, so we have God talking to Satan. Okay, Think, imagine this. You have God talking to Satan. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a, a fence around him, around his household, and around all the things that he has on his side? You have blessed the works of his hand, and his possession have increased in the land. Okay, so here's the fence that I was talking about, the blessed fence. Okay, so God has a fence over, over our lives. And you see, I went to the store this weekend, or this week, and I was looking for a frame. I was looking for something to represent this. So I've, I found this fence, and this fence is symbolic symbolic to what we have around our lives okay so you have a fence around you okay and this fence goes around your life you have, you have this fence and satan is telling god well, how can i get close to him when there's a fence okay so then what, what, what does God say? Let's look at this word. Satan goes, But now stretch out your hands and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. Okay. Put yourself there. Put yourself in those shoes. Job is there, and there's a fence of protection. You have a fence of protection. Okay, Satan says, if you take this fence down, he will curse you. What about you? Would you curse God? Let's continue reading. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay hands on the person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. There's a fence around there's a fence around Job. And here comes Satan. Now there was a day when the sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding besides them, when the Sabines raided them and took them away. Indeed, they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, and another also came in and said, The fire of God had fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, and another also came in and said, The, the Chaldeans formed three bands, raided in camels, and took them away. Yes, and killed the servants and with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, and then another also came in and said, your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house. And it fell on the younger, young people and, the, and they are all dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. No longer do you have a fence. No longer do you have that fence of protection. Now that's Job's story. Let's bring it to our today's story. You are minding your business when all of a sudden people are attacking your character. You're minding your business when all of a sudden you leave to work and come back home and all of your stuff is no longer there. 
Now let me stop preaching about myself and let me talk about you guys. Your car is broken into and the thief steals it. Your house floods and you lose everything. The child that you prayed for dies in your arms. You get a pink slip and you don't know what else is going to happen next. The doctor says, I'm sorry to inform you, you just had a miscarriage. The person you love the most dies suddenly. You have legal issues. The house of your dreams falls through. Your car gets repossessed. Your fence is broken. Do you curse God and say, God, you allow this, so I won't follow you anymore. How are you doing? Let's, look, let's go back to Job's story. I know we don't like to get personal. Then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head. And he fell to the ground and worshiped. Okay, so you have Job modeling for us. When your fence is broken, when the things that you think you need... God says, your fence is no longer there. What is the posture? Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That is coming from your youth. But Jesus said, are you listening? Are you listening to what God is saying? Are you listening what Job modeled for us? Naked I came from my mother's room, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we have a ministry of suffering that we have neglected in today's church. The moment we have a few mishaps, the moment our our fence breaks, we start cursing God. We curse the people, we curse everybody. It doesn't matter who's around us, they're going to they're, they're gonna get it. So we feel so off guard because the fence is no longer there. Your car is broken into. Did you ask God first to say, can you, did he ask you first? No. He is God. You go to the doctor and they say, I'm sorry, you have a miscarriage or your baby dies. All of these things were happening to Job. All of these things were happening. Okay? So you have, in this day and age, God wants you to use this ministry of suffering and Prostrate yourself, okay? God says in the word of God that Job fell down to the ground and worshiped. Don't call your people. Don't call your friends. Don't call your, your family. Get on your knees and worship God. And he will have, he has the last say. Okay? So now we have at the bottom it says, And in all this Job did not sin, nor did he charge God with wrong. He didn't blame God. He didn't say, Oh God, you did this, your fault, this is this and this. He didn't charge him. And then here we go again. Here is the next thing. Here is another meeting. There's another, still another fence that Satan could not reach. And there was a day, this is chapter 2, and there was a day when the Son of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present themselves before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. 
Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth? a blameless and upright man who fear God and shunned evil, and still he holds fast to his integrity. Although you incite me against him to destroy him without cause. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yes, all that a man has, he will give for you, he will give for his life. But stretch your hand and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in your hand, but spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his feet, and he took for himself a uh, pot, uh, he took for himself a potsherd with in which he scraped himself while he sat in the midst of the ashes. So this fence is now on the ground. Satan has now attacked Job's health. You are minding your business. Bring it back to us now. You are minding your business when all of a sudden you feel a bump on your chest. You're minding your business when all of a sudden you go to bed and find yourself in the hospital room. You're minding your business when all of a sudden a routine doctor's visit turns into a barrage of testing. You are minding your business when all of a sudden those tests come back positive for cancer. You are minding your business when all of a sudden you fractured a bone and your dreams to play professionally goes out the window. You are minding your business when you get hurt at work and can no longer do the things that you once did. And you can fill in the blank. In this ministry of suffering, you don't get to choose the things that you go through. You don't get to choose the things that you have been destined to go through. I'm here today to remind you guys that God is still encouraging you in this ministry. The fence may be down. And I know that this is something that uh, many of us can relate to. And to top it off, here's the next part. Verse 9. Then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. The person that's supposed to be your, your, your best friend, the person that's protecting your back, is in this time that they don't know how to, what to say. So they say the dumbest things. If your spouse is with you, just keep looking straight. I don't want, <laughs> I don't want anyone uh, having a, a rough car home, a ride home. This is something that we all, uh, one point or another, will face. Um, I was writing this, this sermon um, when I received, uh, I received notice that one of my old pastor's wives passed away. And she w leaves behind a 10-year-old and uh, 18-year-old and a 20-year-old. So this it has no ex exception. You can be the pastor's wife, you can be the pastor. When that time comes, how will we react? It's 